morning, good morning. My name is Dr. K and I am the founder of Freedom by Design. If this is your first time coming on, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. You are all in for a treat this morning, so get ready. Go ahead and tag a friend, tell them, hey, Freedom by Design has started. We are ready to rock and roll. So good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you guys for tuning in and being on. Go ahead, like and share, like and share, host your watch party. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Lynn. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Sabrina. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, this morning, guys, you are about to get a double whammy. I'm excited this morning. As you see our topic, it is behind the lens. So I know y'all see pictures or camera lenses and you like this girl, no, she love to take pictures. She does, but it's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Linda, I pray that all is well down there in Miami, Florida. As y'all come on, go ahead, like and share, like and share. I'm super excited about today and what's about to happen. I know the other morning you were like, well, where, where is she? What happened? Well, girl, my brothers, let me tell y'all what happened. Y'all sister went ahead and went live and did not post it to be public. I had it where only I was watching. So yeah, that did not help us. But good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's get it on, let's get it on. I see more people coming on. Good morning, Soror, Natalie. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All the way from Pennsylvania in the house. Thank you so much. We got Miami in the house. We are ready. Of course, Atlanta is always representing. We are getting ready for Freedom by Design Live. It is Wisdom Wednesday. And I have no doubt this morning that some wisdom is going to be, oh, we got Texas in the house too. Good morning, Kenneth. There is going to be some wisdom dropped this morning. So let me go ahead and jump right in because I want to make sure that I have all the time we need for our special guests. And um, this morning, you see our topic again is behind the lens. Now, many of us spend time taking pictures, be it selfies and all of that kind of stuff. We, um, you see a lot of people getting photo shoots done and all these kind of things. You see a copy of my book cover there and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. But this morning, I wanna ask you because a lot of us, we look at ourselves and when we take those pictures, be it selfie or professional pictures that we're having taken, we look at a million different pictures so we can pick the right one. And you ever wonder, why is it so hard for me to pick the right picture? Or for many of us ladies, we will say the perfect picture that kind of captures the essence of what we're trying to convey. It's because of how we're seeing ourselves. A lot of times we are um, so critical against ourselves. We see ourselves through the eyes of hurt, rejection. Um, so we're constantly seeking approval. We're constantly trying to get it perfect, but that's not how God sees us. You know, he isn't asking us to get it perfect. He isn't saying clean it up so you, I can use you. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't make us have to get to that point because the truth is family, we can never be perfect. And this morning, you know, I was looking and preparing to get ready for this conversation that we're about to have with a dear friend. And I'm not, I'm going to even go as far as to say she's also a part of the Freedom by Design movement because she's been there since the beginning. You know, I was just looking at this young lady. She talked about her name was Kristen Wolf, how um, she looked at herself and her journey. And I just want to share a few of the scriptures that um, I was reading this morning. What is revealed as we identify how God looks at us is that um, we're a new creature in him. We're a new creation. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And we have to be able to get that in our mind. The old is gone. Now it's about the new. You know, I have been born again by the Holy Spirit. Jesus answered, very, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of the water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to, gives birth to the spirit. And that last verse I wanted to share was, I'm saved by grace as a gift, not because of my performance. So his grace is a gift. You know, I talk about that all the time. It shows up every morning. God saved you by his grace when you believe and you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from him. So it's not about us being perfect. It's about us being able to see ourselves as he does. And with that being said, I have my sister 
from another mister for certain. This young lady and I have known each other as long as my son has been on this earth. So we're talking over 20 years easily. She is also from my hometown of Miami, Florida. She is my soror. As a matter of fact, she pledged me. Um, she has a special place in my heart. She is a educator and I have to give her accolades because she's just not any educator. That's that's her um, foundation education as it relates, but she does so many things. She's an entrepreneur and she is the consummate entrepreneur. But this young lady was the rookie teacher of the year in Miami-Dade County, rookie teacher of the year, Miami-Dade County. I want y'all to understand how big that is. She moved to Georgia and started transitioning. She opened up brick and mortar businesses. She's had boutiques. We have vendored together. We have been on the road with our show. She has her own. Um, she is a photographer. She has other businesses she's going to be able to share and talk to us about. Many of you have been able to fellowship and um, patronize her business. And I'm so grateful and thankful for that. Guys, help me welcome our sister, Goldie Love. Goldie, are you there? I am here. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited. You looking good, sis. I see the comments. They say, yes, Miami-Dade County. Yeah, y'all know how we coming through up here in Georgia. We're doing the thing. So I'm excited. Just a little something in the morning. Of course I woke up like this. <laughs> you better say it. Good morning, everyone. And thank you all for having me this morning. <laughs> Girl, yes, looking good uh, early on a uh, Wednesday morning. Yes, she woke up fabulous, oh, jumped right out of bed, morning. jumped into beautiful. I love it. I love it. So, Goldie, um, I have people on right now, some who know you because they were part of the women's um, our tea party that we had because you were a you know a, you were a part of that when we did our detox conversations. You know, you've been on for different events, but just kind of give. Um, the audience, just a little backdrop on who Goldie Love is. My name is Goldie Love. I am a mother, a daughter, a sister, um, a friend, um, an associate, a confidant. Uh, I am an educator. I, I am and will always be an educator. I was formerly a teacher. I am an entrepreneur. I own my own photography studio, Goldie Love Photography. I am a brand architect. I help others build, identify, understand, and construct their brand visually. And um, I am also an owner. I created a bath and body line um, for men and women connected to the understanding of God's purpose for us called the story of Ruth. So, um, which is a testament to my mother who is, her middle name is Ruth. So it's kind of, you know, the double entendre on there, you know, and what I have recognized in more recent is I am a grower. Ooh. I grow personally and I will not stop until I leave this earth. Um, and and in that, I help others get unstuck in their growth. You know what, Goldie, that's powerful that you say that. And when you, as you said it, I, I had to write it down because I definitely see that. You know, I know you in a way that most people yeah. don't. You know, I always say, people say, oh, I know her. You know of me, but you, you really might not know me, know me now, like right. that. But, you know, as I sit here and I think, and I was um, reflecting on, my um, scriptures this morning and my meditation and definitely my prayer this morning on the God zone, you know, so many times I know in my own life, I've tried to fix it, tried to do it, tried to get in his way. And we've had an opportunity to kind of walk in our journeys together. Yes. And even when we went separate, we came back and it was as if nothing ever, we never skipped a beat. Absolutely. We came back. Um, if you want to just kind of talk to us about your journey in that becoming a grower or being a grower, talk to us about that. So, you know, a lot of times when we're going through things and we're on this road and, you know, we've got this plan and this identity or idea of what our life is supposed to be, then we decide, okay, well, I'm going to have this plan, have this life and by golly, this is what it's going to be. And then 
real life, it doesn't show up because it's always been there. We just come out of our, our cloud of hope and possibility of what the dream of what we created in our head, never considering God's will for our life. Come on now. So in those seasons, then we become different. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to grow in this. So as I went through and I relocated, I moved and, you know, and I'm, then my marriage dissolved. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to grow out of this. And then, you know, a decade went by and I, I would read and I was, uh, you know, personally just introspectively recognizing who I was. And then it was over. And when I say it was over, the season of, okay, you've done the work, you're doing the healing. And I was still growing exponentially. And I was like, well, wait, Okay, am I still dealing with that? You know, I'm questioning. And I recognized that much like the earth we live on, when there's a storm, when there's a hurricane, when there's a natural disaster, when there's a pandemic, it does not stop moving. All right now. In that we change, we adjust, we transform, we gain, we lose, we grow no matter what I am going to grow and I must walk in that growth. I must understand what it means. I must be responsible for it. So yesterday is different from today. I must take action according to the lessons and moments that God has put in front of me immediately for myself and others. Um, you know, everybody watched Oprah the whole gratitude journal, all oh, gratitude, gratitude. And I, I, I did it for years. I'm a journaler to my core, but at maybe, maybe about three years ago, I heard someone say, well, what are you grateful for? And I, my children are awake and you know, I got a job and you can't feel that. Come on now. You, you take that for granted. We take oxygen in our sleep for granted. What I'm happy for today is that yesterday, my debit card, I swiped and it worked. Cause there was a time in my life, not so long ago, that it was a complete prayer. Like I know it's not there. And I'm not talking like 10 years ago and five years ago, when you walk out and become an entrepreneur, I remember leaving my all everything to care for the health of my mother and to, I couldn't do it all. I couldn't work nine hours, be with my children, care for my mother and something had to give. And what gave was my belief of my career. So I ate what I killed. I had to go get it for myself. Yeah, that didn't show up right away. It didn't show up the first day, it didn't show up the second day, it didn't show up the seventh month. You know, I remember one of my dearest friends ringing my doorbell and saying, hey, I put something at the door, paper towels, toilet paper, like a pack of meat. And I, I had to say, not only do, are you grateful, you need this. Because everything I had was going into hoping this thing in my stomach worked, this idea, this burning desire that I could no longer not do. And I had to grow in that. I had to allow myself to be humbled. I had to allow myself to look at myself and others differently. Cause you know, you can quickly grow and get new pedals. Oh, come on now, come on and now. Then, and then you're, you're better. Oh, she's not growing. Her flower yeah. isn't blooming like yours. And, and then here comes your winter and you, you wither up. So I had to, to ensure that what I do and how I act and I fall, I, I have real moments of, and eh, that, that wasn't, mm. but you, you gotta not beat yourself up through that lens. Amen. You gotta not see yourself. So I changed my gratitude to what are you grateful for in the last 24 hours? So you can feel it. Like I don't, I get up every morning and begin and end my day with God. And 
it's just five things. What are you grateful for in the last 24 hours? You know, I'm grateful that I respond in dialogue and in interaction more intentionally versus emotionally. Because there was a season in my life oh that it was full of surface emotion. I responded as the hurt Goldie, the disappointed Goldie, mm -hmm. the divorce Goldie. You got to start looking at how you're responding to these things. You know, as a photographer, I see others in a way that they don't see themselves. But then, you know, there's, there's a couple of angles. I take the picture and I, I see through the scope at the top of the camera. And then when I pull my camera back, there's a screen on my camera that I can see another picture. But when I get home and I'm in my office and I've got my monitors and those images are there, I see it totally different. I see what I missed. Mm -hmm. I see what I didn't focus on. I, you know, I see where I could have done better. That is what we must do with ourselves. When we first see it happening in front of us. But then when we pull back in front of our children, in front of our parents, in front of our mates, what, how are we looking in that moment when we pull back and see it, how are we responding with our words, with our actions? Mm -hmm. And then when we get quiet in that space with God, now. What did I, what did I miss? What did I not focus on? What can I do better? I don't know how to not be that. Surely because of how he has blessed me. And I'm not talking about like cars and homes and, right. you know, I, I have a roof over my head and I have a vehicle. What he has, he has blessed me in um, peace. Mm. I can sleep at night. Um, he has blessed me with this unshakable desire to love me and others, you know, to, to give it away. Um, and he's also shaped, okay, now this is how you're going to go into business. This is how you're going to go into friendships. This is how you're going to go into relationship. This is, oh, okay. I used to have a list. Uh, God, I want this, 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 this. I stopped my seven years ago, my only prayers for God's will over my life. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, me personally, this is me. If I ask for anything different, I am waking up every day and saying, I know what you think God, but I know better for me. Mm -hmm. I know you created me God, but I know better for me. Mm -hmm. I know you, you have a vision for me, but I know better for me. No, no. I got to let it, I want his will. So if his will is left yes. and everyone is right, I'm going left. If his, if his will is not now for five years, I got to sit in the, the not now. If, if his will is don't stop, keep going. If his will is forgive, if his will is forgive again, I got to go with that. You just, you just got to go with that. You know what, Goldie, it's interesting that you say that because there's so much confirmation and the words that you just spoken this morning on the God Zone. I heard Bernadette talking and something she said aligned with exactly what you were saying. And I know it was definitely confirmation for me. I needed to hear that word. What she said aligned with what you just said. And her words were very simple. Let God be God. So... Okay. Goldie can't do it her way and then say, okay, but I trust you. Trina can't do it her way and say, Lord, I trust you. Even though we identify that we still, each day there is some conflict, you know, yes. the in the flesh. We're still walking in that thing. We're still asking God to cover us, to help us. But if we got to let God be God. And as I hear you talk, because our lives and, and not just our lives, our total being are so parallel because you know, I'm a checklist person, you know, yeah. you know, I'm a planner just like you. I, I want to, okay, it needs to look like this and we want to do this and you got me at this point. And so everybody needs to align. And he is saying, no, yeah. it's not going to look like that. When you yeah. talked about the different angles of, or the different levels to the photography, I heard process. You're going to have to trust the process. It might look this way initially, but yes. when you take a second look, when you're able to sit and reflect, 
okay, I see that. But when you get you out of the whole picture, when yes. you get yourself out and you can really take a look at it and look like, oh my goodness, here are all of my, you know, I'm so yes. busy pointing at why their flowers or their petals are not blossoming. Absolutely. But mine really don't look all that high either because, you know, he gave me a little bit of grace and I didn't took it. And I'm acting like I can take the credit for it. And it does not work that way. But also in your talk and what I know in your life, and as I, I told, you, told you before, we're going to be as authentic as we can. There was a process of healing and forgiveness that had to take place. Absolutely. Talk to us about that. You know, um, I, you know, I'm on this, you know, coming out of everything and it was, you know, forgiveness is for yourself, forgiveness is for yourself, forgiveness. And, and that worked when I, when my children were two all the way to 11, <laughs> then the Lord blessed me with teenagers. And teenagers see it so different. And I had to really dig into what forgiveness is. And I had to live it, not just use the word and buy the greeting card. And because they called me to the carpet every day. But if you did, then why this? And if you did, then why that? And I then had to start forgiving one myself and others. And then I had to decide if I was going to be the bigger person or the better person, humbly. Better, bigger meaning I'm going to forgive them. I may not get the forgiveness that or the apology that I want from them. I'm going to forgive them and be bigger about the situation when we're in these spaces it's okay, never mind. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Or I'm going to be the better person, not better than them, better to me about this space. Am I going to be better to me about letting go of what hurt the person responding in that moment? Because when you, when you cut me off in traffic, I'm not responding as the present person. I may react as a person that was hit by a drunk driver 10 years ago. Amen. So I had to be better about my intentions of forgiveness. So that meant I, I couldn't look just solely through my lens of, oh, look, I'm forgiving them at this fit. No, what does that mean? And I had to understand that there are some things I just don't want to forgive. And that's, that's okay. I had to allow my, I had to give myself some grace in that. So I, I think that we would all benefit from being the better person because that's the grower, you know? You know, whenever you see an ad and it's like, you know, better lighting, better food, you know, better service, that's all personal. I, I think if we stick on that road, um, you know, I don't, I, I have teenagers, Lord, I ask for you. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they push and they, you know, they're their mother's child. Um, they push and they question and they challenge. And I'm so grateful um, for, the, for the jig, you know, um, because I, I need it. I need the reminder. You know, I, I need the reminder. And, and I think we, if we could take anything away today is take it as a reminder. Take, take it as a reminder, you know, Lord, my car breaking down again. Yes, but the last time it broke down, you almost sold your soul to get it fixed. This time you swipe me your card and you ain't even looking back. Come on now, come on the, now. The reminder, you know, you know, Lord, I can't believe you know, this man ain't doing right. Which man, your husband or, or, or the seven that wouldn't call you back five years ago when you didn't even know what a decent man looked like and here this man show up and all he want and love and revere is really you. Oh. The reminder. He, he's got to remind us. It's, it's the necessary evil of the growth. 
even in the loss, even in the, it's the sense of it's going away. We've got to have the reminder. Well, why not? I spoke to one of my, my clients yesterday, and I, I have these things called stuck sessions. When you're, you could be doing anything, business, not in business, not you, but you're stuck. We have a conversation. I don't ask you anything about it before we, because I want to be very present. Right. And she said, in full transparency, Goldie, I, I watch people, watch my social media, stories, Facebook, Instagram, they will watch it, they won't like it, they won't share, they won't comment. And it really bothers me. Well, let's, let's go with the analytical part. Your, your audience is aged between 36 and 55. We don't understand Facebook, Instagram stories. I, we we don't so we're just as as if we are now understanding you look back facebook 10 years ago everyone just had words and now everything is a picture allow people some grace in the growth and understanding but if you went into business to get likes posts comments shares close your doors right now right now <laughs> pack it up turn off the lights Tell God, thank y'all for coming out. Good night. Let it, let it go. <laughs> because that will saddle you down mm. with a, a, a burden that is, here's not a word, uncarryable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have too many talents. You have too many opportunities. Here is your moment. Mm. Stop looking through the lens that is not for the camera you're shooting me. Oh, God. That part. And Girl. that's it. Like, like that's it. Get unstuck because he is taking you somewhere. And you are like, no, I'm going to stay right here until I figure out why other people don't do something that I think they should do. You ever figure they don't want to in that moment? You don't know what's going on on the other side of that camera. You don't know what's going on on the other side of that phone. Maybe they were asleep. Does it really matter? Do what you need to do because we are trusting God's will, not his wallet, not, not what you think will work for you. Mm. I want his word and his wisdom. That's what's encompassing in the will of my life. The rest, yeah, yeah, lanyard. Yeah, you know, it's just extra. Good on that. Absolutely, I love it. I love it. I see so many uh, comments. Somebody was like, "Say it again, please." Like <laughs> you talking to me, Goldie. So we are approaching definitely the top of the hour. Um, it always seems like it's like not enough time. And I wanted you guys to know that I put the picture, I always get turned up, the picture of the book there because I wanted you to understand that my friend Goldie, she actually took the um, photo for the cover of Exposed. So those of you that are out there, and I know I have some aspiring writers, I have people who are doing all these different things. And you all know I use, I have two photographers that I utilize. As I said, Goldie is more than my photographer. She's my friend. But when it came down to time for this book, you know, I prayed about it when she and I talked, I, I knew she was supposed to do it. And that's what I, I wanted you to hear about the session. You know, the conversation It's not just show up, take a picture and I'm done. It's a whole ministry to her photography business. And she talked about, I want you to talk about your bath and body line before we get off. And I want you to also share how can um, people reach out to you or follow you? So my bath and body line um, is called the story of Ruth. Um, my, my mother, my best friend, my soror, uh, she, she is, that, that is my 20, you know, with our ups and downs, I would not be here who I am standing in this moment without the strength of her sheer spine. This woman from South Louisiana, I cannot thank her enough. Um, now with her health challenges, her stories resonate so deeply to me. And in that, 
I had her stories in one bucket and then I had my first therapist, which was my shower because going through all I went through, I could not afford therapy. So what I would do was go in the bathroom, turn off the lights and I could cry my way through the moment. And I had to figure how many individuals have my same story. Mm. And so I took that along with my mother's stories of forgiveness and peace and loyalty and celebration and sincerity, you know, and courage. And I created a vegan based soap line intrinsically for that. Um, I would not be telling you the truth if I said I had an idea of really where this would go as a product. But I knew that giving God's word to others was what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you also that there were persons in business that were like, mm, don't put that out there. Don't put, because on each bar of soap, it has um, an affirmation. It has a scripture. It has the definition. Like these are things, and, and I didn't come up with these, you know, these were real prayed over moments from with women and believers. And, you know, there were some real push and pulls of, because when you are sharing and giving and sending out individuals, you know, th this word of God is serious. And, and I struggled with the Lord, is it going to sell us? And he said, well, I'm not doing this. And I don't want you, don't do this for money. This is my work that you are doing for me. This is a ministry. Um, and, and, and I am in the season of, of making sure that it grows exponentially because there are people that this healing is for. Um, we, we gonna get out that shower, we gonna stop crying. We're going to, in that moment, commune and, and, and speak with God. So you can either give it to yourself or give it as a gift. But his, his word, we stand on it. It is solid ground. It is solid ground. Um, you can all find me at goldielove.com. Um, you can go to the contact page and send me a message. Uh, I am super excited. I'm in the process of transitioning my business and rebranding and you know so when the seasons slow down i'll get an opportunity but you can definitely follow me on instagram at i am goldie love you can follow me on my photography page at goldie love photo on instagram um, goldie love on facebook and goldie love photography on facebook that that's where i am uh the emails come to me there is i am the team i am the staff come on now <laughs> You know, oh, the wow. messages wow. come to me, <laughs> the information, you know, if you want to have a conversation, if you have a business idea, if you, if you want to get unstuck, um, if you want to pray, uh, if you, if you want to giggle, baby, I love that. Uh, I, I have been, if you look at the circle of life, I've, I've been on this, this carousel several times and um, there's nothing I haven't heard nor said, amen. Amen. God has brought me a long way. Um, I am not above reproach, correction, or just sheer understanding of human experience. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love people. I do. E even when I feel as if they don't love me back. Mm -hmm. and, and that is when I grow the most because God is showing me, you know, because that is what we do with him. He absolutely loves us and our walk and our life and our words don't love him back. Mm -hmm. You know, don't I'm love sitting, him back. I'm sitting here and I'm looking. Um, they're loving um, the conversation. It says, do it for the Lord, not the finances. And somebody was like, ha, the giggle ministry. Come on now. Let me tell you, <laughs> the giggle ministry. <laughs> necessary necessary <laughs> How about that oh my god the giggles so goldie i just want to thank you um my friend my sister my soror for being Absolutely. on with us this morning thank i know you, this friend. is not going to be the last time for certain um we already talked about the fact that where we are in our lives right now is not by accident and something 
major is going to happen. We just don't know what, but we're going to allow him to use us. We're going to let his will be done. We're putting our checklist off to the side. We're dropping it because we do not know best. I love you. I thank you for this conversation. And um, I look forward to spending time with you very soon. Yes. And yes. Um, let's just go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.